All right, Nate, you go through this process, now you finish your college career. What is it like now preparing for what is obviously the biggest moment, the draft, and it starts here at Landau Performance with this training, very specific training for the NFL Combine? Yeah, there's no wasted days. Every day is specific to a certain drill, a certain movement, um, a lot of 40 prep, um, a lot of jumping prep, explosive movements, and um, some similarities to what you do in a college weight room, um, a little different, a little more specific on body positioning and um, and stuff like that. But it's training, training's training, and it's exciting, and I love training as part of the game, and um, I'm excited. Yeah, the, the guys that kind of do well at the Combine embrace this process, but it's not football in some ways, so how do you kind of adjust yourself to, because this is a competition in so many ways, but you don't have the shoulder pad and helmets on. Yeah, I think, um, you know, all these guys I'm training with came, they're the top of their programs too. So we compete in the weight room, we compete on the field. And um, I think that's what, you know, drives a lot of guys too, is competing with the other person next to them. Um, and, and there's a lot of that going on in this in this weight room. It looked like you were going to be turned pro a year earlier, and then you suffer the unfortunate injury. What has that process been like? Because even if your career had stopped then in terms of college, you had had an excellent career. So how did you have to, I don't say reframe expectations, but kind of hit the reset button and know you were going back for that final year? Yeah, once that injury happened, I had to assess, you know, what was going on, what my future looked like. And luckily I had the COVID year to come back and play another year and um, put my head down and focus on rehab and focus getting back on the field and returning to, you know, the player I was before the injury or even better. And I think I, um, you know, attacked rehab well enough and the people in my corner helped me get back to be an even better player than I was pre-injury. When I talk to people about you, you say that you're, you're quiet off the field, you're not assuming, but man, when you play the game, I, I call you land shark. I mean, you are relentless. Where does that side come from when you are on the field and we see the type of tackle you are and just that, that relentless power you bring to the position? Yeah, I think that's just the game. The game brings it out of me. I'm, I'm, I feel at home when I'm playing the game. Um, I'm super comfortable. I've played so much of the game now um, to, you know, where a lot of things I do feel like second nature. And um, I'm able, able to be my true, you know, self when, and my true competitive self comes out during the game. And that's, you know, through tackling, through whatever it is, being a vocal leader. Um, and it's just a game of football. I think that brings it out on me. Why do you love football when a sport where it's violent, it's contact, the training is hard, practice stinks at times because it's, you know, you get hurt, you're bruised. Why do you love football? I think there's a lot of reasons. I love, you know, the, the life lessons that football has taught me growing up, um, the friendships and the people I've met playing football. And then, you know, there's, there's other contact sports, but not much like football. And um, I'm just... I'm just a contact guy. I love, I love being linebackers. I think it's the best position on the field. And um, it's, just, it's just a sports that, that I was bred to be, uh, be a player at and a sport that I was bred to play. When did you know you liked tackling? Like, cause you tackle as well as any college backer I've seen in a long time. And that's a skill. It's become a lost art, frankly, at the professional level at times because they don't really practice in pads much. When did you kind of sit it's like, man, I like this. I like tackling, whether it's space or at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I started playing football when I was young. I started playing when I was seven. Um, and I, I, I kind of figured out that I was aggressive, you know, and liked tackling then. I, I'm the youngest of two brothers, and so I had to keep up with my older brothers. And I think that's also what helped me be the player I am today. My dad also played rugby, and so learning some stuff from him um, has made me, you know, take that next step in, in being a football player. So I, when I did background on your story, so your, your family, you were born in Zimbabwe and came up to the United States? Yes, sir. And so how did that shape your journey as well? So is that where dad played rugby then? Yeah, so my dad played um, for the University of Cape Town in South Africa. And then we grew up in Zimbabwe. I was born there along with my whole family. And he played for the Zimbabwean national team. Did you ever think your route was going to be rugby or was that you fell in football, fell into football? Was it a friend or just the watching it that you fell into it at such a young age? Yeah, so we moved here when I was four and football was a prevalent thing in the United States. And so um, I did play rugby in high school a little bit and I loved rugby, but I was just better at football. I uh, started when I was young and, um, you know, I made friends through school and there started playing football and, um, you know, my parents put me in football and it just worked out really well. What was it about the CU Buffs experience that you look back on now that you're proud of? That I'm proud of? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, CU has done so many great things for me and, and you know, allowed me to play on a huge stage and, and be the player I am today. I'm, I'm thankful for every coach that's been through that building, every person that's been through that building that has pushed me to be where I am today and all the players that I've, you know, um, led and, and players that have led me as well to be the player I am. And 
just the friendships and, and the people that I've met is something that I'll never forget about CU. You've had some guys go through this process re recently, LaVisca, Montez, some other guys. Do you lean on them, or how does that work as you now start going through this process to get ready for the draft? Yeah, I remember them going through the process. We talked about it, and um, it's a lot of the same things they were saying, a lot of hard work grinding, um, you know, taking it day by day. And it's a, they say it's the longest job interview of your life, and um, that's holding true. And, um, you know, they give me a lot of good advice. I haven't talked to them much during this process. They're all busy doing whatever they're doing, and I'm busy doing what I'm doing. But um, in the past, I've definitely talked to them about, you know, what this process entails. The tape shows who you are as a player. What do you want to show at the combine? Yeah, I mean, my, my tape's great. I, I was able to put a lot of great film out there for a lot of years. And, um, you know, I just want to prove to people that I'm more athletic than I think I am. And I think, you know, I'm excited to, you know, shock a little bit of people and, um, you know, exceed not only their expectations, but my expectations as well. That would be what, in speed in the 40 maybe? just Because the tackling is a given. Is that is it the, the bench press and the speed, or is it specifically you want to show them maybe in the you know the jumping and lateral and, and 40 that maybe you're at more athletic than maybe they even think? Yeah, I want to show that I'm more athletic in all those categories, whether it's speed, agility, jumping, uh, strength, um, kind of just blow out their expectations completely out of the water um, with every drill and every um, aspect of the combine. So you grow up in Zimbabwe, but you gather football in your life early. Did you follow linebacker at some point as you got toward middle school, high school? Was there someone you modeled your game after or watched and said, man, I like the way he plays. I'd like to be that type of impact player. Yeah, I always was a huge fan of Brian Erlacher growing up as a kid. And then, you know, as I got a little bit older, Luke Keekley was someone I, I watched on YouTube a bunch. And just the way he prepares for the game, attacks the game. And hearing how other people talk about him, how he plays, is something um, that I admire about him. What is a day like for you right now, Ben, if you take us into your life? What is a day in the life of Nate as he's preparing for, uh, you know, this NFL combine, you know, from diet to workout? Yeah, so we, I wake up, have one of my prepared meals. We are, we're on a meal plan, um, you know, go to the bubble, start training, whether that's for the 40 um, or the specific drills, field drills. And then I have a break, go eat lunch, um, you know, get off my feet, relax a little bit. And then I come back here for a lift. And then after lift, I go straight to the recovery center, um, the RX recovery center, and, and uh, you know, get my body ready for the next day and go home, rest, get to bed early, sleep. Sleep's the most important thing. And then wake up and do it all over again the next day. How many days a week are we doing that? Uh, six days a week. And then Sunday's kind of my off day where I can just hang out and relax a little bit. So all of the meals right now are prepared? Are you allowed a cheat moment on Sunday? Or is it pretty much planned? Uh, yeah. Is it high carb route for weight or, and energy because of the workouts? It's, you know, it's, it's a balance. It's a completely balanced meal. It's protein, carbs, all that stuff. Um, our, train, our nutritionist did say we're allowed a couple cheat days in there. I try to stay strict to my meal um, for as long as I can. There are some things that I do enjoy having um, that aren't a part of the meal plan. That's fantastic. So now how do you pace it out? Then when do you leave for the combine, like right before March 1st or 2nd, and you're, everything's geared to that? Yeah, so I'll start tapering here um, from the training that I have been doing in, in a couple days, and then I leave for the combine on the 2nd, and then field, field day drills are on the 5th. When you look at that, is it, it expect, is it anxiety? Is it cool energy when you do something like this? I imagine you probably haven't done a test like that maybe in high school at some point when they were just getting guys metrics, you know? How do you approach it mentally when you're gearing up for, it is a game, but it's, you know, it's not a game technically. Yeah, I think you just have to be confident in your ability and your training and have your body fall back on that. You do so many things in here that are on repeat that right. when you go back to the combine and do it, it's just second nature and your body's allowed um, just to stay loose. Um, obviously, like a game, you're preparing for something to compete and there's definitely that nervous, excited energy that, that flows through and um, but, you know, I, I'm used to playing in front of thousands of people, so I don't think it'll be that much of a problem. What did you finish at your career? Have you changed your body type at all over these last, what, it'd be about five, six weeks? Yeah, so I, I've played around 235. I'm about 237, 238 now. Just more muscle, less and less fat. Just, um, you know, having a more in-shape body. Okay. And a couple more. Your, what was your favorite moment at CU when you look back out now? Um, I would have to say definitely beating Nebraska at Nebraska and at CU. Um, those were my two favorite games for sure. How come? Just because it was Nebraska? Or, I mean, you played well, but it was it just because of the, the juice of the game? Yeah, there's so much buzz around town that week. And um, not, you know, being grown up a Colorado fan, you come into Colorado and they, they teach you about the old Nebraska-CU rivalry and be able to 
bring home that win is huge, especially, you know, talking to um, older people who live in the town who have been CU fans for a long time, just how much that means to the community. Last thing, when you dream about the NFL, what, what do you think that is when, when you, in your mind when you think about the NFL? What do you think about it, how you could fit into that? Uh, the NFL has just been a dream of mine. It's been a dream of so many kids, and you hear the, you know, the statistics, how that's so not in your favor. And, um, you know, to be in the position I am, I'm super blessed. The Lord's gift gifted me with so many things, and um, I'm excited to, you know, put those skills on display. And I do believe I, I belong in that league. I've proved that in college and proved that in high school to go to college. And, um, you know, that's just the end goal. It's a dream, and I want to do it for me. I want to do it for my family and uh, my family in the future, um, just for so many reasons. But... Um, NFL is the end goal, and that's, you know, why do something if you don't want to reach the end goal? And I've been working for that since I was seven years old. Yeah, if you're working this hard, it's got to be fun. And you love football, right? It's just fun being out there. Yeah, football is great. It's the best sport. Um, that's, you know, it's kind of the only sport really where you train all year for only like 12 opportunities. Um, and so, you know, the reward is definitely worth all the work. And if you don't love the game, it won't love you back.